The first thing we want to do is to set all of the switches on the front of the control panel to the off position. We then want to isolate all of the 24 volt control circuit field terminals by removing the disconnect blades. We want to make sure that all miniature circuit breakers and manual motor starters are in the off position. We then want to remove the power plug from the DDC controller plus any analog input plugs that may be connected to voltage, thermistor or current inputs. We also want to make sure that all means of local electrical isolation points are set to the off position. We can now begin to pre-commission the control panel. So the first thing we're going to check is the main incoming power supplies which can be found on page 2 of our control panel wiring schematics. And we do this by checking the correct voltages present on the incoming side of the isolator. Be sure to check all phases to ensure correct voltages present between each phase. If the panel is fitted with incoming terminals, it's recommended that you check the voltage there as well. Using some pliers, rotate the isolator shaft to the on position. You'll see a small indent that indicates the position of the isolator. When it's in the on position, we can then check the load side for the correct voltages. Again, check between each phase to ensure the correct voltage is present between each phase. If the correct voltage isn't present, seek the guidance of the electrical installer. If the voltages were correct, we can then record this in our commissioning documentation and move on with the process. Now MCB2A which serves the DDC controller we're going to leave isolated for now and we'll come back to that later on. The MCB we're going to be looking at is MCB2B which is the 240 volt side of the transformer and then MCB2C which is the 24 volt side of the transformer which gives us our control circuit. So we can start by testing the live side of MCB2B to ensure that we've got 240 volts present. If we have, switch it on and we should now have 240 volts at the transformer primary side. Once we have 240 volts present on the primary side of the transformer, this means we should then have 24 volts on the secondary side of the transformer, which means we'll have 24 volts on the primary side of MCB2C, and if we have 24 volts on the primary side of MCB. 2C, we can switch this on and this will give us our 0, 1 main control circuit. Again, check the voltage is correct before moving on with the process. So now we have the main 0, 1 control circuit. This is conventional in all Gemco control panels and once this is live, you'd start to see some lamps illuminate on the control panel door. It's recommended at this point that you carry out a lamp test using the lamp test facility button to ensure that all LEDs or lamps are correctly illuminated. Now once we have our main control circuit we can move on to the safety circuits. These are the gas safety circuits and the fire safety circuits that are going to allow gas into the plant room. They are made up of the building fire system which is a normally closed contact. They're also made up of an emergency knockoff button at each exit and a thermal link above each gas appliance and you may have a gas detector in the plant room as well. Now all Gemco safety interlocks work on a very simple principle of voltage out, voltage back to energizer relay and the first safety interlock we're going to be looking at is the building fire system which is relay 3A. So the first thing we need to do is check voltages present at terminal 301. Using your multimeter, check that 24 volts is present on the primary side of the disconnect terminal. Once the correct voltage is measured on the primary side of the disconnect terminal, you can then push in the blade into the disconnect terminal, pushing the 24 volts out into the field. Relay 3A should be energized and the building fire LED should no longer be illuminated. The next safety circuit we're looking at are the emergency knockoff buttons and the thermal links above each boiler. These are wired in series to energize Relay 3B. Check each thermal link in the field to ensure it's connected correctly and all knockoff buttons are fully depressed. You'll see that the gas safety circuit failed light is illuminated. Using the same process, check the voltage at the primary side of the disconnect terminal 303. If 24 volts is present, push in the blade into the disconnect terminal. Relay 3B should be energized and the LED will switch off. 
The last circuit in this case is a gas detector mounted on the wall. It works on the same principle and this time we're energising relay 3C. As before, check the voltage on the terminal 307, push in the disconnect blade, we should now have voltage back on 308, energising relay 3C. Now we have all three safety circuit relays energised, this now completes our healthy fire safety circuit 1. We can now reset the gas solenoid valve if we wish to using the push button on the front of the control panel. Now our life safety circuits are healthy and we have our one control circuit, we now need to create a pressure safety circuit, which is circuit 4. In order to do so, we need to energise the safety interlock relays that monitor the high and low pressure within the pressurisation unit. As before, the same principle applies. Voltage out, voltage back, energise a relay. In this case, we're monitoring the high and low pressure, so we want to energise relay 4A and relay 4B. With the local electrical isolator still in the off position, remove the cover of the appliance and locate the connections for the volt-free contact relay outputs. Using the same process as before, checking the voltage on the disconnect terminal, pushing in the blade, receiving the voltage back on terminal 404, all being healthy, this should energise relay 4A and 4B, and the LEDs on the front of the control panel should no longer be illuminated. Now that relay 4A and 4B are energised, we've created our number 4 control circuit, which is our pressure safety circuit. You can check the hand position of any pump for the correct voltage. 24 volts should be present on any number 4 cable. So now we can move on to the pumps and we can start enabling pumps, but before we do that, we need to check the health status of the pump. This will be connected to a volt-free contact using the same principle as before. Voltage out, voltage back, energizer relay. In this case, we're looking at relay 6C. This monitors a fault in the pump and will illuminate a trip lamp. Using the same process as before, measuring voltage at the terminal, pushing in the disconnect blade, pushing the voltage out into the field, you can then check the common of the relay output inside the pump should you have 24 volts, you can then check the normally closed contact of the relay output to ensure that we're getting the correct voltage back to the control panel. All being well, the relay will energize and will allow us to enable the pump. Here we can switch the pump to hand and check continuity between the start-stop cables. Turn on the MCB for the power supply, switch on the local isolator, and plug in the start-stop cables. Once you've done this, the pump should start to run. If they're Grunfos pumps and the pump isn't running, you may have to disable the multi-pump setup. You can do this by going to the assist menu, scrolling down to multi-pump setup, and disabling by pressing no multi-pump function. You then proceed to follow the onboard Grunfos wizard until the complete process has been finished. At the end of the wizard, you can return to the home screen by pressing the home button. For direct online pumps or motors with switched power supplies, you want to check the full load current on the plate of each motor. You then want to set the overload to the correct full load current on the corresponding motor starter. You can then turn each motor starter on and switch the pump to the hand position on the control panel. The corresponding contactor should energise once the pumps are switched to hand. You can then measure that the correct voltage is going out to the pump or motor. As before, we can check the fault status of each boiler by using the same process, energising the fault relay. Once healthy and we have 24 volts back at the control panel, we can switch the boiler on and check continuity to the start-stop cables. We can then power up the boiler and leave power available for the boiler commissioning engineer. We can then repeat this process for all remaining items of plant, checking the status relays are correctly energized and that we're able to run each item of plant in the hand position. Field items such as differential pressure switches work on the same principle. We can push out the voltage to the field. Once flow is established, we should receive voltage back 
to the control panel, energizing the corresponding relay. You can also test the relay operation by using the test facility on the switch. If for some reason an item of plant needs overriding, you can do so by using the tag on top of the relay. And if for any reason there are spare cables or redundant cables, these should be clearly marked up and left in the control panel. So now all our functional pre-commissioning checks are complete, we can now carry out a sensor point-to-point -point test by powering up the controller using MCB2A. Switch the circuit breaker to the on position and measure the voltage at the plug for the DDC controller. Should you have the correct voltage, plug the power supply in and the LEDs on the front of the controller should illuminate. All of the sensor readings on the display panel should be reading open circuit. So we want to plug them in one by one and watch the correct values come back on the display. Go to each sensor and disconnect each sensor one by one to ensure that the correct sensor has the correct reference on the display panel. This is a point-to-point -point test that should be carried out across all sensors connected to the controller. As each tensor is tested, the results can be recorded on our commissioning documentation. Once complete, the power section door should be closed. We can access the power section later using the engineering switch without turning the isolator off. All plant is now able to run in hand and you should lock the door using the key provided. 